Let's close our eyes for prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we well, thank you for your people. Thank you for our friends and neighbors who have invited. And thank you for all those who are listening to this message. Lord, I pray a miracle will come for everyone. You will shatter and destroy all the works of the devil. You will set your people free. And this day will be the day of manifestation of your power in every life. In Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Sit now if you have a place to sit. We're looking at 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 26. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 26. Run now, I pray thee, to meet her. And say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with the child? And she said, And I say, and you say, and we all say, it is well. I'm talking to you tonight on the subject, is it well? It is well. Is it well? It is well. Somebody say it with me. Is it well? It is well. Tonight, it is well. If you're sick, tonight you are getting well. If you're paralyzed, tonight it will be well. If you are blind tonight, it is well. If there's any oppression in your life, any attack in your life, and I ask, is it well? Tonight, tell me the answer. It is well. All those attacks and all those afflictions coming upon your life, tonight is a night of demonstration. The Lord will take all those things away in Jesus' name. Let me tell you the story of this woman. And then from this story, you can get your own story. A new story. A new life. A new dispensation. I'm going to say it again. You've had it from one of our testimonies. This year will be the best year you ever lived in your life. Because everything that is turned upside down will be right side up. Tonight it will be another milestone in your life. Another day of manifestation, demonstration, and power in your life in Jesus' name. The, the woman, this woman here, had married for a long time. And there was no child. And it appears she wasn't even bothered about it anymore because the husband was of age and old. But Elisha, the man of God, passed that way. And when Elisha, the man of God, passed that way, the woman just said, this man of God, holy man of God, passing this way every time, why don't we make a chamber for him? Make an accommodation for him. Put a table there, put furniture there, and then anytime he comes around, when he wants to minister, he can have a place. And the husband said, yes, I pray there will be a good agreement between husband and wife. Because if two of you shall agree together, as touching anything you ask, the Lord will do it for you in Jesus' name. And so without wasting time, they made a chamber for the man of God. And he came there. And the man of God felt this woman has done something marvelous, something good. What can we do for her? And then told his own servant to call the woman and said, what can we do for you? And tonight the question is coming to you. What will God do for you tonight? What's on your mind? What's your body? What's bothering you tonight? What do you want the Lord to do? And the woman said, well, I live in my own place. And there's no challenge. Do we talk to the king on your behalf? And she couldn't think about any request. And eventually the servant of the man of God said, she doesn't have any child. And so the man of God said, by this time next year, you will carry your miracle baby. And somebody there is saying, Amen. And so she went. And according to the word of God, that's what happened. Because what we say tonight here for you, this is what will happen. Miracle, this is what will happen. Healing, this is what will happen. A transformation, a change of life. From poverty to prosperity, I said, this is what will happen. 
from crying, from sorrow, unto joy and gladness. It will happen in Jesus' name. And so, but one day after the child was born, the child said, my head, my head. And eventually, uh, the child was taken to the mother and the child died. Your blessing will not die. Your child will not die. Your wife will not die. That thing that causes joy in your heart, in your life, will not die in Jesus' name. And so this woman, wise woman, wise woman, any wise woman there tonight? I see you. I said, I see you. Wonders will come upon your life. This wise woman then put the child on the bed of the man of God and told the husband, I, want to, I need to go and see the man of God. You're seeing somebody today. You're seeing power today. You're seeing anointing today. It will break every yoke in your life in Jesus' name. It was when she was coming to the man of God, the man of God saw her afar off. I see somebody there afar off. I said, I see somebody there afar off. What do you see there? The blessing of God is coming. And then the man of God said, Sir, go and tell, go and ask her, is it well? Is it well with your husband? Give me an answer there. Is it well with the child? Is it well with you? It is well. A confirmation is coming your way in Jesus' name. And then eventually, he came, she came to the man of God. And then her sorrow blew out. Her sorrow busted out. And she said, look at my condition. This condition, my brother, will change. This condition, my sister, will change. And eventually, she said, I will not let you go. You will get there yourself. And then she got there to cut a long story short. A miracle happened. And at the end of the meeting tonight, a miracle happens. At the end of the meeting tonight, a healing comes your way. At the end of the meeting tonight, signs and wonders will come to you in Jesus' name. My topic tonight is, is it well? It is well. Tell me the topic. Is it well? It is well. Shout out the topic. It is well. Heaven records it for you. It is well. I affirm meet in your life. It is well. Believers agree together on your behalf tonight. It is well. Three points we're going to look at. Number one is the expectation. It's the expectation. You see, when you come like this and you come to the presence of God, He's the great king. He's the mighty king. He's the creator of the heavens and the earth. You must expect something and your expectation will come. It will be fulfilled. Number one is the expectation. Number two is the expression. It's the expression. Expression. You express what you believe. You express the power of God. You express that this is what God will do. You will not be disappointed. It will happen. I said it will happen. You are coming here to give your own testimony. Number one, expectation. Number two, expression. Number three is the exploits. The exploits, manifestation of power, manifestation of glory, a demonstration of miracle. It is in your life. Be getting ready now. What are you going to do when you get to work? Be getting ready. What are you going to do when those blind eyes open? Be getting ready. What are you going to do when you get out of that wheelchair and you take step one? And then step two, and somebody says, says, you might fall. You say, no, 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 because today is my day. Somebody there said, today is my day. And then you take another step, and then you start walking, and then you start running. What are you going to do when the miracle comes today? That thing in your brain that is knocking your brain here and there, and you couldn't have any rest. What are you going to do when the peace will come? And when the gentle breeze will come there and everything will cool down. And all the affliction of the devil and all the harassment of the devil tonight, everything will go away in Jesus' name. 
I'm asking what are you going to are you going to react? Are you going to respond when this terrible swelling on your body? Because at the mention of the name of Jesus, that swelling will vanish away. What are you going to do? Are you going to react when HIV AIDS? You go back to the hospital and they test you and they say now it is negative. You will not carry HIV AIDS. You will not carry sickness. You will not carry infirmity. You will carry miracle. You will carry healing. And this year, this year you will smile. This year you will rejoice. Because there are exploits. Come back to number one. Tell me your number one there. Number one, expectation of faith. Expectation of faith. On this particular day. Think about that. Expectation of faith on this particular day. This is your day. This day you will never forget. This particular day, something is happening over there already. The expectation of faith on this particular day. Number two is the expression of faith against premature death. Against premature death. You see this boy that died, this child that died, this premature. The father was still alive, the mother was still alive, and then the devil came and he struck in that place. At the hand of the devil be taken away from your family. Because there's the expression of faith against premature death. Not only that, this point number two, uh, there is expression of faith against persistent demons. The demons that are there, and he said, we will not go. I say, I'm here tonight to declare you demons, you are going. Demon of oppression, you are going tonight. And demon of affliction, you are going tonight. And demon of torment, you are going tonight. Expression of faith against premature death, against persistent demons. Now, there's another part to this point number two. It is the expression of faith against painful diseases. All the painful diseases. Diseases are going away tonight. We mention the name of Jesus and they are gone. And by the stripes of Jesus tonight, you are healed in Jesus' name. Somebody shout, I am healed. I said, somebody shout, I am healed. It is fulfilled in Jesus' name. Number three, the exploits of faith through the powerful deliverer. The exploits of faith through the powerful deliverer. Let's come back to number one. It's the expression of faith. On this particular day. And look at this. Second Kings. Second Kings. Chapter 4. From verse 8. And it fell on a day. That Elisha passed to Shunem. Where was a great woman. I pray the Lord will make her women here great. I said the Lord will make her women there great. They will no more look down on you. A little lady there. They no more look down on you. She's sick. No more look down on you. She's jobless. No more look down on you. She has a broken home. All the things that are broken in your family, in your life, all, the, all that, the Lord will repair tonight. A great woman. And she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was. That as oft as he passed by, he turned him either to eat bread. You see how, how great things start in a small way. And you see, the little meeting we're having today is going to bring something great, unforgettable in your life in Jesus' name. And she said to her husband, Behold, now I perceive that this is an holy man of God which passes by us continually. Holy man of God which passes by us continually. I want to ask my friend over there, you pass the church every time continually and you never make a statement. What's happening there? That deep light church was happening there. I pass this place continually. You know, I'm hearing the sun coming on Monday. What's happening there? I'm hearing the sun coming out on Thursday. What's happening there? I'm hearing the sun coming out on Sunday. What's happening there? They never check up. They never check up. But this woman said, this man is passing here continually. We must do something. You must do something. You know, in your life, good things always pass by. Good people always pass by. And the gospel 
gospel always passing by and the career of miracle always passing by you must stop you must say this good thing that is passing by every time here let me see what it is and you will be a partaker somebody there said you'll be a partaker and this is the beginning of partaking of something good in your life in jesus name look at verse 10 it says let us make a little chamber i pray thee on the wall and let us search for him there a bed a table is true and a candlestick and it shall be when he comes to us that he shall turn in hither and it fell on a day particular day and this is your day i say particular day this is your day and it fell on a day that he came thither and he turned into the chamber and he lay there let, let me stop there for a moment maybe you're asking I, I i don't have any money to build a chamber for the man of god hold on i'll explain to you I don't have all the expenses I can put into this to build a local church for the people of God, for them to be worshipping. Maybe you can, others cannot. Wait a minute, I'll tell you something. You see, if you look at, I'll read it to you, Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15. You can do this. And when you do what this woman has done, an unforgettable miracle will come in your life. Somebody there is saying, Amen. Amen. Exodus chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 2. It says, The Lord is my strength and song. It will be your strength. It will be your song. And then it says, And he has become my salvation. That's why it begins. It's your salvation tonight. Because Jesus Christ died so that you will live. He took your sins away so that you can have salvation. And then you can say, He is my God. He is my strength. He is my song. He is my salvation. Look at this. And I will prepare him. I will prepare him. It doesn't say we. This personal. This is singular. I will prepare him an habitation. I will prepare him an habitation. My father's God. And I will exalt him. You know what he's saying here? He's saying there is an habitation I can prepare for God. Which habitation is that? God says he doesn't live in houses made of blood and cement and stone. He has our hearts to live in. And like that woman observed that this Elisha is passing by every time. And then told the husband, why don't we make a habitation for this man of God? Now you are making a habitation for somebody greater than, than, uh, 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 than this Elisha. You are making it for God. That is the habitation of your... Isn't that what God said? Isn't that what Jesus said? He says, behold, I stand at the door. Which door? The door of this building, uh, uh. the door of that house, uh, uh. and the door, the gate of his, no, it's talking about the habitation you are going to make for him. It says, behold, I stand at the door, and I'm knocking. If anyone hears my voice, and he opens the door, I will come in. When Christ comes in, into your habitation, miracle will begin. And the supernatural will begin. That's what happened to this woman. When she made the chamber for this man of God, immediately that man of God entered there. That man of God began to say, something must happen to this woman. A miracle must happen to this woman. And the supernatural must come upon this woman. The moment you open the door of your heart, as Jesus said, I stand at the door. And I'm knocking. If anyone, anyone, anyone there, I know you are there. I said, I know you are there. Maybe you didn't hear this before. Jesus, the Redeemer, he wants to live inside you. Jesus, the healer, he wants to live inside you. Jesus, the wonder worker, he wants to live inside you. Jesus, the Savior, he wants to live inside you. That's why he says, if anyone, anyone, and there's no discrimination here, and you can come and say, Lord, I want you to enter into my heart. He would be with you. He will stay with you. And then he will do wonders in your life. In Jesus name. That woman made an habitation. A chamber. A room. And had a place for the man of God. In their house. And then in your heart you have a place for Jesus. You say Jesus. This is for you. My heart. My soul. 
my mind, everything within me. That's why God said, look at this one in a second, the second Corinthians chapter six. Second Corinthians chapter six. If you don't have a Bible, I read it to you. Second Corinthians chapter six, and I'm reading from verse 17. It says, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord. Almighty, tonight it will happen to you. Look at verse 16 here. It says, What agreement as the temple of God with idols? And for, for ye are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them. See that. I will dwell in them. When the Almighty God comes to dwell in you, Satan will run away, darkness will go away. All your sins will be forgiven. You will be free. I will come to dwell in you. And then he says, and I will walk in them. And I will be their God. And they shall be my people. That's why the Lord is saying that tonight is your night. Somebody there said, tonight is your night. That you open that door. My friend uh, there, maybe you knew this before. But then you went away. Well, that's old story. They call it backsliding. They call it falling into sin. They call it disappointing the Lord. They call it straying away. That's old story. A new story is coming in your life. Those who have gone away, you are coming back. And Jesus is saying, I am still waiting. Just open that door. And let Satan go out, I will come in. Open that door, the door of your heart, the door of your spirit, and the door of your soul. Open that door and let all those things come out, and then I will come in. Let me ask you a question. If you expect him and a VIP, very important personality, to come into a particular place in your house, what do you do? You sweep the floor. You clean up that house and you make everything clean. All the dirty things there, all the refuse there, you sweep away. If Jesus Christ, VIP from heaven, if Jesus Christ, the one who has overcome the devil, who has overcome sin, and the one that came to be your savior, he says, I am coming in. What are you going to do? You're going to sweep the floor of your heart. All those things that are there, all the bad, bad things, all the dirty things, all the stinky, smelly things there, we cannot begin to name them now. You sweep them away. We call that repentance. You turn away from them. You say, no, no place for you again. No place for you again. No place for you again. The king is coming in. The king of kings is coming in. Jesus is coming in. And because Jesus is coming in, all these dirty things will go. They are going right now. Somebody there said they are going right now. And then Jesus comes in. Because there is an expectation in your life. I'm going to give you the chance to allow Jesus Christ to come into you. Come back to our story. It's in 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter 4. And here now, we're reading from verse 8. We're reading from verse 8. Well, I've read that already. 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter 4, come to verse 12. In verse 12 it says, And he said to Gehazi, his servant, Call this Shunammite. And when he had called her, she stood before him and said unto, her, and said unto him, Say now to her, Watch, behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. What is to be done for thee? You've been careful. You came here tonight. I, I see the road. You came all that way. All the hold up and all the cars and everything. And you still came. There's something in your heart. I said there's something in your heart. What do you want? Because now it's going to be well with you. Because now the Lord is going to change all those negative things. You've taken this trouble. And you have come here. You came here. There was emptiness in the heart. It will fill your heart. Sorrow in the heart. It will give you joy in your heart. Sin in the heart. Sin will go out. Salvation will come in. Guilt, condemnation there. Forgiveness and freedom will come in. And eventually, in verse 16, and he said, about this season, according to the time of life, this prophecy now, according to the, according to the uh, time of life, a prophecy, a, a prophecy is coming upon somebody. 
I said prophecy is coming upon somebody. Thou shalt embrace a son. Thou shalt embrace the miracle. Thou shalt embrace a healing. Thou shalt embrace a deliverance. Your time has come. Because you have come. If you will take the next step and open the door of your heart and say, Jesus, come in, the rest will follow. Where are you? I said the rest will follow. Tonight is your night. Number two is the expression. Now the child has been born. And then upon a certain day, this happened to the child. The child was sick. Look at verse 25. In verse 25, so she went and came unto the man of God to Mount Camel. And it came to pass when the man of God saw her afar off, the Lord has seen you. The spirit of God has located you where you are. A miracle is coming from heaven and you are located right there where you are. Where are you there? I said, where are you there? That miracle will locate you. The power will locate you. Deliverance will locate you. He saw him, saw her far off, and said to Gehazi, His servant, behold yonder that Shunammite. Run now, I pray thee, and to meet, to meet her, and say to her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thee? Is it well with thee? You know, she was sorrowful. But she will not confess sorrow. She was believed. She will, she will not con uh, confess bereavement. She was oppressed. She will not confess oppression. The expression of your faith. The expression of your faith. While you are hearing this message. Already you are telling yourself. And you are telling your neighbors. And you are telling anybody. Everybody that cares to hear. My condition will change tonight. I said my condition will change tonight. My sorrow will go tonight. My tears will be dried up tonight. My sickness will be healed tonight. Therefore, I will not say, uh -uh, I'm sorrowful. Things are bad. Things are upside down. It is well. Shout it for me. Is it well with her husband? I said, is it well with her husband? Uh, the husband was not there. The husband was far away. And then he said, is it well with your husband? It will be well with your husband in Jesus' name. Can I tell you something? The confession of your mouth can change the situation of your husband. The confession of your mouth can change the situation of that your boy that has a problem. That your daughter that has a problem. The confession of your mouth can change the situation of your wife that has a problem. Stop crying. Miracle has come. And stop being sorrowful. Miracle has come. Whatever news you have heard about your, son, your child, your daughter, your son. Whatever news you have heard about your husband and about your wife. Something good is coming your way. Is it, is it well with the child? And she answered. And she answered. And she answered. You know, here is where some people specialize in crying. And they want to cry more than any other woman that ever cried. So that they will show that I love my child. My child is in the hospital. My child is in the confinement somewhere. My child has been arrested. My child is under oppression. My child is this and that. And so the people will say, oh, how she loves her child. And she, the way she demonstrates that is by crying. And when we say, is it well with the child? And then instead of answering, crying, crying, crying. But this woman said, I will not cry because it is well. Somebody there said, I will not cry because it is well. Somebody there said, you will not cry because you know it is well. You are just coming from the hospital. And you have just taken that medical test. And they put an x-ray in your hand. And the doctor said, look at this area. Look at this crack. And look at this and look at that. And the doctor is almost crying for you himself. And then you carry that thing. And then somebody met you. And the moment you get down from the bus. Uh, uh, my brother, what's happening? My sister, what's happening? Is it well? And then they begin to cry. You will not cry from today. I said you will not cry from today. You don't carry only x-ray. You carry miracle. 
I say you don't carry medical report, you carry miracle. You don't carry bad news, you carry miracle. And so when the man of God said, is it well with the child? She answered and said, it is well. I told you that this is the expression of faith. Expression of faith. Number one, against premature death. Number two, against persistent demons. Number three, against painful diseases. Let me show you in Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. Uh, if you look at Mark chapter 5, it's has three parts. Mark chapter 5, in the first part of Mark chapter 5, is the persistent demons. Persistent demon. This man had a legion of evil spirits. But you know, Jesus asked part to cast them out. I said, do you know that Jesus has part to cast them out? He will cast them out away from your life. Away from that boy. Away from that child. Whatever they have smoked, Jesus is greater than that marijuana. Whatever they are drinking, Jesus is greater than all those drugs. And the effect and the power of those drugs on those children today, today, they'll be cancelled in their lives in Jesus' name. And so, look at this in uh, Mark chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 8. For he had said unto him, Come out of the man, that unclean spirit. And he said, and he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And then, uh, eventually, Jesus said, Go out of him. In a single word, a single sentence, and your deliverance has come. And your healing has come. And the freedom has come. Look at this in verse 14. Verse 14. And they that fed the swine fled. And told each in the city. And in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. And they come to Jesus. And they see him that was possessed. No more possessed. I said you are no more possessed. That was possessed with the devil. And at the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind and they were afraid that's a persistent demon jesus drove them out how about painful disease look at it jesus has power to you look at verse 25 and a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. And when she heard uh, of Jesus, she came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, for she said, expression. For she said, expression of faith. For she said, expression of faith against painful diseases. For she said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. I shall be whole. Somebody there. I shall be whole. Somebody there. I shall be whole. Say it with me. I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that the plague that she was healed of that plague. God has power. Christ has power tonight. Right, that, right here in, that, in this place, against persistent demons, against painful diseases, against premature death. Look at verse, 30, verse 35 of this same chapter. In verse 35, while he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue, of the synagogue's house, certain which said, thy daughter is dead. Thy daughter is dead. Why trouble thou the master? any further and as soon as jesus heard the word that was spoken he said unto unto the ruler of the synagogue be not afraid only believe that's all we need tonight be not afraid only believe be not afraid only believe i am not afraid i am not afraid i believe i believe it will happen and because of that that's why jesus went there and when Jesus went there, verse 41, and he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, that little Kumai, which is been interpreter, interpreted, daughter, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of twelve. 
That's why I will call it from mature day. A person should not die at 12, even at 20, even at 40, even at 50, 60. Premature death cancel from your family in Jesus' name. And they were astonished with great astonishment. Come back to 2 Kings chapter 4. Number one is the expectation. Because you build him a chamber in your heart. An accommodation in your spirit. You give him habitation. You say Jesus coming. Coming to stay. Coming today. And you will ever remain inside my heart. Because he stands at the door and is knocking. And you make him an habitation. That's the beginning of miracle in your life. And then number two is the expression of faith. Against disease. Against demons. And against death. Is it well? Give me the expression. Is it well? Give me that expression well. Let Satan know you believe what you are saying. Is it well with you? When you get to the office, understand whatever has happened there, as you go there tomorrow, it is well. And when you get back to the house, whatever was driving you there before, and you know, every time they switch off the light, the fear will come. Then you know, it is well. And whatever it is in the market, all those uh, market people, they are after you, not pay this money and pay that money, and then you are afraid, they sprinkle something there, sweep that thing away and see them, because it is well. It is well with you in Jesus' name. Number one, the expectation. Number two, the expression. Number three now, the exploits of faith through the powerful deliverer. We're coming to 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 32. And when Elisha was come into the house, behold, the child was dead and laid upon his bed. And he went in therefore, he went in therefore and shut the door upon them twain and prayed unto the Lord. Prayed unto the Lord. I, I want you to notice something here. Number one, a personal decision. A personal decision. Can I tell you, that boy, that child would have died and would not have come back were it not for the decision of the mother. The decision of the mother. Personal. Personal decision. When she saw that that child was dead, she said, uh-uh, this is not final. This sickness, this is not final. This death, this is not final. This calamity, this is not final. If you make up your mind that that thing happened in your life, this is not final, something will change. Am I talking to somebody? I said something will change in Jesus' name. A personal decision. It is when you come to that personal decision. You know, she didn't say, well, I don't know what my husband will think about this. I don't want to know what my neighbors will think about this. She told the husband, I want to get to the man of God right now. Very urgently. What's the problem? What's the problem happening to any? He said, it shall be well. It shall be well. And then as she came, and the man of God said, how is it? Is it well with you? And she shouted, it is well. Number one, it is a personal decision. And as you come tonight, and you are making up your mind, I'm going to make a personal decision tonight. Nobody will hinder me. I want Jesus Christ to live inside my heart. He is the Savior. He is the Redeemer. He is the miracle worker. And he comes to live inside you. Personal decision. Number two, purposeful determination. Purposeful determination. Look at this. Look at verse 30. Look at verse 30 here. Concerning this a woman. And uh, it says in uh, chapter 4 verse 30. And the mother of the child said. As the Lord liveth. And as I so liveth. I will not leave thee. I will not leave thee. You know Elisha gave his star to uh, Gehazi. He said go and lay it on the child. He said I don't have any business with Gehazi. I don't have any business with religion. All I know is you. And if Jesus is the only one you know, he is my savior. 
He is my redeemer. He is my healer. He is my deliverer. I will not leave you. I will not let you go. And that, that's why how Jacob received the blessing. The angel came and they wrestled together. And the angel said, let me go because the morning is coming. He said, I will not let you go. Except you bless me a purposeful determination. And then, number three, prevailing decree. Prevailing decree. The man of God, Elisha, prayed for that child. It was a decree. A decree is coming on your situation tonight. A decree of prayer. It will prevail against the problem of your life in Jesus' name. I see you. I see miracle. I see you. I see healing. I see you there. I see deliverance. I see you. I hear testimony coming out of your mouth. Because there is a prevailing decree. Look at this. It's in Job chapter 22. Job chapter 22. I'm reading from verse 27. Job chapter 22 verse 27. Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him. Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him. Anybody there going to pray tonight? I said anybody there going to pray tonight? I want to assure you God has answered your prayer. He said, thou shalt make thy prayer unto him, and he shall hear thee. He shall hear thee. He shall hear thee, and thou shalt pay thy vows. That is to promise the Lord, I receive you in my heart. I'll never go back to evil anymore. You will pay that vow. You will commit yourself. Look at, look at verse 28. Thou shalt also decree is seen and it shall be established unto thee. Thou shalt decree a sin and it shall be established unto thee. And look up here. We use that word decree. We use that a lot when we were under military government in our country here. And you know at that time when they issue out a decree, they don't say I think I suggest I feel I am proposing, uh-uh, decree does not come like that. Decree comes like an authoritative statement. At this time, get up, decree. And that Satan has to leave that place. At this time, move. And those demons have to move. At this time, quit. And that disease has to leave that place. At this time, give it up. And that oppressing devil has to give you up. A decree. And a decree is coming your way tonight. I said a decree is coming your way tonight. When I pronounce that thing. And I say that swelling vanish out of that place. I, I'm not giving a suggestion. Satan knows that. I'm not giving an idea. All your problems know that. I'm not giving a supposition. And that paralysis knows that. I'm giving a decree. And a decree is meant to be obeyed. And it will be obeyed. And tonight you are free. Look at this, verse 28. It says, Thou shalt also decree a sin, and it shall be established unto thee. And thy light, the light shall shine upon thy ways. All your darkness will vanish away. All the confusion will vanish away. Because number one, there's a personal decision. Number two, there's a purposeful determination. Number three, there is a prevailing decree. And so that child became well. Look at the end of the story. What the woman said, is it well with your husband? Shout and tell me. It was fulfilled at the end. Is it well with you? Tell me. It was fulfilled at the end. And is it well with the child? Tell me the answer. And it was fulfilled. And as you have said, it is well. Her own was fulfilled. Your own will be fulfilled. I said your own will be fulfilled. It's bouch and eyes closed. We have come to the moment of a personal decision right now. A personal decision right now. This is your chance. And this can be for you a day of miracle. A day of power. A day of salvation. A day of forgiveness. The Lord tonight is giving you the chance to make up your mind. It's bowed and eyes closed. You're giving yourself to the Lord. You're saying, I'm going to make him a habitation. I'm going to make him a chamber. I'm going to allow him to come into my heart. It says, behold, I stand at the door of your heart. 
and I'm knocking. If anyone will hear my voice and open the door, I Christ, I the Savior, I the Redeemer, I the Miracle Worker, I will come in unto him. And then he says, for today, 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 I must abide in your house. You'll take Jesus back home today. Wherever you are, you raise up your hand. God bless you. God bless you. Wonderful there. Wonderful there. It's going to be a day of salvation for you. If you're raising up your hand, just where you are, stand up right there. Thank you very much. You're raising up your hand. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. And you know, you tell the Lord yourself, this is your own decision, personal decision. You're saying, Lord Jesus, come in. I raise up your hand as you are standing up anywhere you are inside the building outside anywhere you are just raise up that hand and praying with you right now father in the name of jesus i thank you for our brothers and sisters who have opened the door of their hearts and they're making an habitation for the king of kings and for the savior and they say jesus christ savior coming coming unto them in jesus name and i pray lord the blood of jesus will wash them Wash them whiter than snow. And you forgive all their sins in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, you give them the key of repentance. That they totally, totally turn away from sin. And then new life will come into every one of them. Assure them, Lord, of your salvation. Of your forgiveness. And of your freedom. And give them the power to go and live in newness of life. Confirm each in every life, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And the young people of God said, Amen. I say my miracle is coming. Expressway, expressway, expressway. There is no ghost law tonight for miracle. There is no delay for miracle tonight. There is no hindrance for miracle tonight. Somebody their miracle is coming. Somebody there, miracle is coming. What is miracle coming there? If you are blind, days at the time, those blind eyes must open. If you are lame, days at the time, power is coming your way. Express miracle is coming your way. Because there's going to be a prevailing decree tonight. Swelling will vanish away from your body. All the brain problem, everything will vanish away. That HIV AIDS will go away. Hey, that cancer will be healed in Jesus' name. Identify, locate where the problem is. Whatever the problem may be. This power night. Miracle night. And days of the night of the spectacular. Uh, identify where it is and then lay your hands where the problem is. Lay your hand where the problem is. And now we're going to pray. And I send for the word of power into your life, into your body. And this very time, the same Jesus yesterday, today, and forever, he will do it right now. And then when you hear the final amen, you will see that change. And then you will demonstrate that change. You will never be the same again. Are you ready there? Somebody there waiting for a miracle, where is he? Where is she there? You raise up that hand. It's coming your way. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you tonight because I know it's the night of the demonstration, manifestation of your spirit and your power. Lord, I pray for everyone. Send forth your healing power to everyone in Jesus' name. Tonight, concerning that brother, concerning that sister, concerning that child, concerning that neighbor, Concerning that sick person, I say, it is well. Concerning you, my brother, I said, it is well. Concerning you, sister, I said, it is well. Concerning you going through that terrible pain, I say tonight, it is well. Oh Lord, touch everyone right now. And I pray, Lord, that your healing virtue will pass through everyone tonight and set your people free in Jesus' name. Those demonic powers attacking your brain, attacking your body, afflicting you in any way, I command those demons, come out in Jesus' name. That painful disease, the disease that will be suffering for a long time, Pain here, pain there. Lord, I pray right now, touch them miraculously. Set them free. Set them free. Sickness, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. 
those cancer germs, I command you to dry up. Cancer, you will not take the life of this person. I command you, cancer, be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray total healing. Complete healing. Bring unto him, bring unto her in Jesus' name. Those kidneys that are not functioning, I pray that life will come right now. A creative miracle is coming upon those kidneys. Be healed in Jesus' name. The lungs problem, respiratory problem, the asthma, I command, be healed in Jesus' name. All that uh, vertebrate and your colon and all the, all the parts of your body that is having that ache and that uh, terrible problem, I send for the healing virtue to you right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. I command, Lord, the person that is deaf and dumb, oh Lord, which all things are possible. Touch those deaf ears. Touch those dumb tongues. And I command right now, be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those who are blind. I pray the Lord will touch your eyes. Glaucoma, come out in Jesus' name. Cataract, come out in Jesus' name. All the dimness of your sight, be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those who are lame. Maybe they have stroke or they have paralysis. Whatever it is, I command your power right now upon them. And Lord, I pray, express with miracle. Touch them right now. Transform them right now. I pray, let get up and walk in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those who have been married for a long time. No child, miracle child, come. Miracle child, come. Confirm the miracle upon them right now in Jesus' name. Lord, all the requests of their lives, everything they need, everything they have presented before you, grant them the answer to their prayer. Answer to their petition. And Lord, the miracle for the challenge of their lives in Jesus' name. Receive your miracle. Receive your miracle. Receive your miracle. Do it in every life, Lord. And let there be joy and testimony of it is well in every life in Jesus' name. I thank you because I know it is done. I know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Another amen. It is done. Check up yourself. You'll see the miracle working power of God. It has touched your body already. Through. I wedded I wedded on 96. So after the wedding, we are still looking, waiting for the Lord for the child. But no child. We are still believing God. And continue going to hospital to hospital, even from my state, before I come to Lagos. We are going to hospital. As we come here, they will direct us here and here. We are continuing to go into the hospital. When the doctor finished, we say, no hope. I still believe in God. I say, so far, there is life. There is hope. I believe in God. We keep on praying. Praying. Even the time our daddy in the law started this monthly program, I continue. We've been going. Starting from that January that year, reaching December, Satan came and began to tell me, hmm, if you don't get your blessing in this program, he didn't say that you will have issue. I say, Satan, in my heart, I will receive my blessing. So, we are here, and our pastor will be in the Abuja that time. Preaching. So I'm children church because I'm working with children church. I'm praying and telling God to visit me. And my husband here also, I'm been crying, telling God to visit him. So after that February, because we are running to the hospital. So the last hospital we go, after the doctor do operation, everything, he tell my husband that there is no hope for issue again. To save my life is to remove my womb because of the condition of my health, the pains that I passing through every month. Hmm. My I'm short, I tap my husband, say, tell and say, let's go. It's only God have the final say. Leave it for God. So we went. 
and stay and not going anywhere again. I stay like that till three good years. No hospital, nothing, nothing. So I pray and I'm believing God. And even remember the word that my human connector told me, Mommy, fine, you He told me one year that because I told her that I'm tired, that I'm tired. He told me that we will leave it for God, that maybe I should stop going to hospital and leave it for God. So I remember that word. So I decided that I will not go to the hospital again. So I stayed three good years without going anywhere, praying, believing God. So that year, February, the Lord visited me with this baby child. I don't even know that I'm pregnant. Amen. When we went to the hospital, because I became sick, when we went to the hospital, the, ho the doctor do the test and say that he's, neg he's positive. We, me and my husband stand, they look and like this. We don't know who the one because we don't hear negative, negative tire. He said, Mr. Adaba, I told you that your wife is pregnant. That time we realize ourselves. So God helping me, even the time that admit me in the Navy hospital, that the same doctor told me that there is no hope. He's consultant here. God make him to become that faithful Thursday. As he see my husband, he tell and say, Mr. Adaba, ah, long time, why are you here? He say, my wife is here. He say, what have you? He say, yeah, my wife is pregnant. Sure, he follow my husband, enter the woman hall, and see me, say, Mr. Mr. Adaba, I say, sir. In short, the man bowed down and praise God, say that praise God is wonderful. Amen. So, praise I give, the, my baby name is Raul Shuku. That is, leave it for God, a marvelous baby. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. My name is Sister Chinwe Dolo. I am from Navy Town District, Aboju Group. I want to glorify God for what he has done for me. I gave my life to Christ in the year 1996. When I was a young lady living with my auntie and I was invited to Powers of Old, Ayobo. that was my first time being there and I got there, the Lord visited me, I surrendered my life to Christ and to this day, the Lord has been showing me mercy. Praise the Lord! What brought me here is what God did for me. I had growth, growth in my private body as long as my finger. That growth had been there, but it came that this January... That our daddy told us that it's going to be the best year ever. The devil came. And that growth became something else. Became red. Red. You know what they call pure red. And my brethren, it is only the person carrying the thing that will know what is carrying. And then God in heaven. The pain was so much. It will pain me from my brain to my heart. Sometimes as if it's sucking me. But my husband said I should go to the hospital. I called my elder sister, who is a believer at Enugu. She said, Chinwe, do something for me. I said, well, I said, go and show this to a gynecologist. I entered my room. I lay down. I raised up my leg. I said, Dr. Jesus, the greatest physician that ever studied medicine, you are my gynecologist today. How can I start this year with hospital? I said, Lord Jesus, I am going to believe you. I am not going anywhere. I didn't tell my pastor. I didn't tell people. I said, because if you tell people, they will say, go to hospital. I said, this one is between me and God. Let me know whether it is a crime to trust you. I said, God, I trust you. This growth, you will remove it. When we had February pro monthly program, the man of God was praying. He, he, he already mentioned growth. I would say, Lord Jesus, take it away. I didn't tell any of my children workers. I didn't tell anybody around me except that my sister and then in the school, the person that was my partner in the school, my brother, I cannot sit down. I will sit with one part of my body. When we went for mini congress, people that sat around me will notice I could not sit down. I was using two chairs, one to support myself, the other one to be managing myself. Sometimes I have to go to the toilet to go and change, remove my underwear because I cannot manage. The pain was too much, my brother, until that fateful day. One teacher said, Mrs. Dollar, go and show this to the doctor. I said, Jesus, you have had it again. I've showed it to you. I see God want to show me mercy. I said, by the power in the name of Jesus, 
By the power and the blood of Jesus, by the power and the word of God. This thing will dry and it will come out. And the man of God will say, come out in Jesus' name. My brethren, God is faithful. Help me say, God is faithful. <laughs> I got home that day, just entered the toilet to ease myself. As I pull up that thing, fell. The growth fell and I picked it up. I knelt down. I said, I picked up the growth. It was dried according to the word of the man of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. My name is Sister Chika Mokula. I'm from Trade Fair District. And by the grace of God, I am saved. I thank God for how he saved me in 2013. By the grace of God, I heard a salvation message. After which I was moved in my spirit. I confessed all my sins before the Lord. Because that, at that point, all my sins were glaring at me. I prayed and God saved me. Praise the Lord. I got to my shop that morning. I wanted to sweep my shop. I saw dog waste in front of my shop. I swept it and packed it away into the dustbin. <coughs> Immediately I sat down. All my whole body started scratching me. Even my daughter that went with me to the shop on that day. As we got home, she was complaining of the scratches. But the next day, she couldn't feel it anymore. I was the only one feeling the scratches continuously. If I take my bath, all my whole body will be itching. That morning, that was Saturday morning, we went for the program, for the Saturday program. And Pastor ended the message for that morning with a testimony. Immediately after the testimony, he started praying and tears were flowing down my eyes. I had a feeling that I never had before. And at that moment, I believed that God had healed me. And by the grace of God, that was, whole, that was how the whole itching stopped. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My name is Sister Adande Gloria. I'm from Mazamaza District under Agboju Group. Last year, November, I had a terrible sickness that it gave me terrible pain in, in a particular part of my body. The pain was so severe that I could not bear it. It caused an extent because my family members were not around. My woman coordinator came to me and said, my district pastor said, they should take me to the hospital. And I was taken to the hospital, some scans were run, and it, it was discovered that I had some growth in some parts of my body. So I was, the doctor said I had to go for operation. Then I said, God, I don't want any cuts on any part of my body. Then I was going to go, I said, God, they said it's this operation. What do you say about it? Because I don't want to do it. I don't want to decide on my own. Then when I, because the, when I opened the Bible, God used to speak to me through the word of God. And I saw in the book where it was written that those that are sick, this is those that are, that are, those that are okay, need not a physician, but those that are sick that need a physician. And I said, God, are you saying I should go for this operation? Then I decided and made up my mind. Then my family member came and said the operation will not be held here, that they should take me to my place, which is Benin Republic. Then I was taken there, though I don't really understand French, I could not really communicate friendly with the, with the doctors. When I was taken to the, to, then it was not raining when I was placed on emergency. But immediately they took me to the theater when it started raining. And there was a lot of lightning, a lot of thundering. Then I remember the word of God that says in the book of, in the book of Luke chapter 10 verse 16, I said, and when Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning fell from heaven. When there was a lot of lightning in the, in the theater room and all the doctors left me alone in the theater room and there was darkness everywhere. Then I said, Lord Jesus, I am not depending on these doctors, but I am depending on you. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, come and perform this operation yourself. Then before I knew it, after some time, the doctors came in. And one of the doctors walked up to me and said, come, who is your friend? Then I said, it is Jesus that is my friend. Then he stared at me and looked at me again. Then the, the operation started. Before I knew it, they told me the operation has been performed. That was how the operation was successful. Even before I entered the theater room, I called my, my group choir master. He prayed along with me. My leaders prayed along with me. The church brethren, they all prayed along with me. I'm standing here today to glorify the name of the Lord because despite all the challenges in the theater room, the mercy of God stood for me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
My name is Sister Chinye Onyeka. I thank God for helping me and making me to know God. Praise the Lord. My testimony goes like this. I married in 2003 and we are believing God for the fruit of the womb. And I went for many hospitals. They say everything. Even I went for the flushing more than three times. Then after the last one, I say no, that I should not go anywhere again for any, any kind of test or any kind of anything for this very uh, issue. I continue believing God. And when we sign this very uh, monthly program, I, I remember what one sister told me. After one year of that monthly program, following the second year, the sister told me, Sister Chinyere, this very year is your year. I say, Amen, I believe it. As time goes on, I continue believing God. But I remember that very uh, Easter retreat, a, a man of God said that, that he has transferred power into every one of us, that we should hold one another and pray to one another. I told my left, I saw my leader in children's church. She held my hand and we prayed together. After that retreat, I went home. Although the period came out, but my faith did not shake. The following month, the Lord visited me. I conceived. I give birth January. This is the very baby here. Chukwebuka means God is great. Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! 